uh, the DNC because the Democratic National Convention is going on this week. And, and quite honestly, um, I uh, did not realize that. <laughs> I knew it was in August. Like, I knew they'd moved it to sometime in August. I just, like, didn't know it was this week because I just didn't see anything about it. And, you know, I think we get obsessed with elections in this country because it's, it's theater. That's, that's how it's, that's how it's really taken in in this, in this country is, uh, electoral politics are theater. Hence why, um, hence why and also why it's theater is because there's so much money involved in it. It's no different than a Hollywood production. That's all it is. It's just a production that kind of involves the leadership of this country. That kind of involves the, uh, you know, what happens to our health care and how our roads are taken care of. It's all entertainment, really, is, is sort of the way that they take it. Um, so is it because, because you know, we have so much fraud and interference and really it's it's it's... A reality show in and of itself. Are we surprised that in 2016 a reality show host fucking won? No, I kind of think it's like the most accurate viewpoint of what the American election system is and what both the DNC and the RNC have turned it into. It's theater, it's not about policy, it's not about legislating for the people, it's not about upholding the fucking Constitution. It's about feel-goodery. That's kind of what the Democratic National Convention really is. There's a lot of feel-goody talk. I've seen some stuff, right? And then there's, like, arbitrary moments of, like, really intense drama and, like, gotcha moments, you know? Like, uh, like House solving a fucking medical case. Uh, And it's really, it's just like, what a twist! You know, you have those moments as well. I, wa- I mean, I haven't watched all the speeches. I, I watched the one that I'm going to talk about here in a, in a minute, uh, which is Obama's speech. But, you know, I watched clips here and there. It's like Michelle Obama wants to talk about empathy and walking in other people's shoes. And it's just like, what? whose shoes have you walked in? Have you walked in the shoes of people that voted for Barack Obama, your husband, and went for uh, fucking eight years were just incredibly disappointed the whole time all the lofty promises all the all the fighting for the people all the hope and the change that he promised are you walking in their shoes or are you just telling them to shut the fuck up bend at the knee and vote for the party because that's really all I hear from party elites in in the democratic uh, from the democratic party bend the knee and vote for the party we have Kamala Harris talking about justice and equality and it's just like are you serious look at your fucking record your record is one of the worst when it comes to criminal justice reform you put single moms in prison for for kids not going to school and never bothered to ask why these kids don't feel comfortable going to school you laughed at a man on death row your, your department uh, was so incompetent that it lost evidence and then you couldn't take responsibility for it. You're, you're like the poster child for the prison industrial complex and you're talking about quality and justice? Like, it, these are just platitudes. No one's really talking about what their policies are going to be. Coming out and just saying, well, Black Lives Matter isn't enough when you don't legislate in accordance with that. So it's just theater, right? And then we had Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez nominating Bernie Sanders and was like, whoa, what a twist, what a gotcha. It's like, yeah, you gave her an Instagram video amount of time to make a speech while you have people like John Kasich getting headline spots. Michelle Obama got a headline spot. You don't want the rising stars of the Democratic Party to fucking say something? What Pramila Jayapal? Why didn't you get her to say some stuff? Susan Sarandon didn't get to say anything. 
Killer Mike. You could have gotten Killer Mike to come up and say some shit at the Democratic National. But these are all Bernie people. Right? Joe Rogan's had more Democrats uh, on his fucking thing than uh, MSNBC has. Could have invited Joe Rogan. But he supported Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, and, and Bernie Sanders. Even fucking Bernie went on and, and talked about shit. Again, I didn't, I didn't get to see Bernie's speech. I really should. I might. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I have time to do that this weekend and maybe talk about it. Uh, but j- just the mere fact that he's going along with this party that has fucked him over twice now. Is just like unfathomable to me. But it's good theater. It's really, really good fucking theater. Right? It's a good show. It's a good performance. And a lot of these politics uh, or politicians uh, are doing that. They're they're performing for you guys. They're not legislating. I mean, it's just like look at look at look at the last four years alone. Not to mention what the fuck the Republicans did during the Obama administration. Like to fucking John Boehner crying. Theater. Nancy Pelosi ripping up Trump's State of the Union speech. Theater. Kamala Harris pretending she has emotions. Theater. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez nominating Bernie Sanders. It's cool, but it's theater. So is it a wonder that when we fund it like it's a fucking Hollywood movie where there's a couple people, the executive producers, the studios, if you will, that put money into these candidates into these campaigns, these major productions that they are. Is it any wonder that the President of the United States right now, starting in 2016, wound up being a reality TV star? It's not. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, please hit the share button, and make sure you are subscribed to the channel on uh, whatever platform you're watching this on, whether you're watching this on YouTube, on Facebook, or Rockfin. Uh, Rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency site that is basically like Netflix for content producers. So if you like political comedy, if you like this channel, or Graham Elwood, or Ron Placone, Jimmy Dore, Kim Iverson, a whole bunch of other folks that are on Rockfin. If you become a subscriber for just 10 bucks a month, you get uh, all of the premium content that all of these content producers put out there. So uh, make sure you check that out. If you want to follow me, if you want to make sure that you are keeping up to date with all the videos that I'm putting putting up the best way and easiest way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H. M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. You can uh, check out past videos there. You can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation there. You can also check out all of my stand-up comedy albums, which are available on all of the streaming platforms, all the downloading platforms. Uh, But the big way that you can get them is through Bandcamp. Uh, Most of the albums are available for free on Bandcamp. And the, the newest album that I released is available for only one dollar, which is uh, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome in my book. So uh, thanks again for, for watching. Thanks again to, to everybody that has subscribed, has become sustaining members, and continues to share these videos. Till the next one, we'll see you on the road.